Hi, my name is Rachel Bailey um, and I'm working here as a medical writer and head of research at Rheumatoid Solutions. And I'm very excited to be here to you, with you today to talk to you about a topic that I've been researching closely over the past few weeks um, to bring you the best evidence based research in this area. And what we're going to be talking about is the carnivore diet. And this is a diet plan that many of you may have heard of. Um, it's been increasing in popularity recently um, with some supporters um, sharing information on the Internet um, of their anecdotal evidence of the benefits of this diet um, and self-reporting on um, improvements in their disease symptoms. It's um, an all meat diet, which includes meat, fish and other animal derived products. Um, but as a meat based diet, it um, eliminates any plant based products, nuts, grains, vegetables, fruits. And it is similar to a ketogenic diet, but it's a lot more restrictive in what you can eat. Um, it's high in protein, obviously, because of the amount of animal products that are consumed. And um, it's also high in fat, um, a lot of saturated fat which is um, bad for our overall health anyway. Um, and usually it's free of carbohydrates or very low in carbohydrates. Um, so, yes, it has gained in popularity recently um, with several supporters um, claiming its benefits. But the um, evidence that they pr produce uh, to support this is just anecdotal evidence. Um, so what we're here to do today is to um, delve a little bit deeper than this anecdotal evidence. And we're going to present to you um, our evidence based research that is all backed by the science. So um, before we get started, I just need to um, present to you this um, disclaimer to say that the information presented in this presentation um, is not medical advice. Um, so if you're going to make any changes to your diet, exercise, drugs uh, or supplements, then you should consult with your doctor before doing so. So I just want to start by um, discussing why some people recommend an all meat diet um, to both the general population and those with autoimmune diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis. Obviously, it's a very restrictive diet um, and this is hard to sustain long term. Obviously, eliminating all plant based foods and sticking only to meat products. Um, and we all know that um, enjoying a healthy, balanced whole foods diet has a, a massive effect on our health, positive impact. Uh, so why would some people believe that limiting ourselves to just animal based foods is good for our health? So what we know about meat is it's high in protein, which obviously is important for all of us um, for muscle development, growth, repair. And um, meat's also a good source of iron um, and vitamin B12, which are important for all of us, particularly for um rheumatoid arthritis patients because we know that they often have low levels of these. Um, but while these are all high levels in meat and we can obtain it from meat based products, it is also very easy to obtain all of the protein and iron that we need directly from plants. Um, and vitamin B12 is also available in a very simple supplement that we can um, take each day. And elderly adults in particular, they are advised to take a supplement of vitamin B12 anyway, regardless of whether they have a um, animal based diet or not. So why do some people report um, improvement in their symptoms when they start a carnivore diet? Well, it's this isn't surprising um, because the carnivore diet is an elimination diet. 
uh, you go into it eliminating plant-based products and stick only to animal-based products. Um, we know that people with autoimmune diseases such as inflammatory arthritis often suffer from sensitivities to different foods. So um, any form of elimination diet, including a carnivore diet, can uh, potentially improve symptoms of autoimmune diseases because these specific food triggers are temporarily avoided. Um, but this is just a short term benefit of the diet and it is not sustainable long term. So um, what I'd like to discuss next is whether a carnivore diet actually increases inflammation. So while we've um, highlighted in the previous slide that some supporters suggest an improvement in their symptoms with a carnivore diet, we know that um, despite many searches, there's no actual definitive scientific evidence to prove this. Um, and as I said, I've done a lot of research over the past few weeks um, looking into whether there are any scientific papers to to prove a positive effect. And I haven't found any. Um, and actually, in fact, it's possible that this type of diet could um, exacerbate symptoms of autoimmune disease, including rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so a diet that is high in inflammatory foods, such as meat and animal based products, could make uh, symptoms worse, um, including symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and while I've been looking into this question, um, so my question here was, does a carnivore diet increase inflammation? I have found a couple of papers that I'd like to bring your attention to. Um, I've put the references here at the bottom of the slide so you can go away and have a look at the information for yourselves. Um, but I just wanted to discuss these two papers with you um, first. So the first paper was um, a systematic literature review. So this was looking at many um, papers that have been published and peer reviewed over the years um, to try and find if there was an association between meat and inflammation. So what this paper um, reported was that a meat based or a Western light -like diet, uh, so a diet high in meat and animal based products, um, can increase inflammatory markers. So these are markers such as C reactive protein. So this is um, showing an association between eating meat and systemic inflammation throughout the body. And then this paper below is um, a cross-sectional study, and it's very recently published just last year. Um, and this paper described an association between eating more meat and in particular processed meats um, and higher levels, again, of inflammatory markers. Um, but actually here in this paper, they um, attributed the increase in inflammation to adiposity, now, adiposity is the body's storage of fats. Uh, so we know that meat um, is high in saturated fats. Um, and these saturated fats then get um, deposited throughout the body. And obviously, this can lead to obesity um, and people being overweight. So this in itself is highlighting the unhealthy nature of the diet um, an increase in body fat. And this then goes on to increase inflammation throughout the body. So um, my research has shown that um, a carnivore diet can increase inflammation. Um, and this was looking at inflammatory markers. So this is just inflammation throughout the body and um, not specifically um, looking at inflammation anywhere or with a particular disease. So then um, the next question that I wanted to address was whether a carnivore diet could specifically impact upon rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and while a lot of experts believed that there was some link between meat consumption and developing rheumatoid arthritis, I wanted to actually see what the science said and to highlight some of the, the studies in the area. So again, I've placed the references at the bottom of the, the slide here so that you can go in 
read through these papers yourself or, or the abstracts and get an idea of, of the information that's there. Um, there are a number of studies that are highlighting an association between meat and um, both disease activity and the development of, of rheumatoid arthritis. So firstly, um, the first paper at the top, this um, cross-sectional study showed a an association between eating a lot of red meat and developing rheumatoid arthritis at an earlier age. Um, and this was particularly in those who smoke and are overweight. Um, the study had taken into a fact that owned to account all of the other factors, um, such as age, smoking, um, and narrowed it down to red meat specifically as an, um, a risk factor for developing early onset rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and this is the same with other diseases. Um, there is plenty of science um, papers that show evidence linking high intake of red meat to diseases such as cardiovascular disease. Um, the second paper there is um, a paper that discusses the risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis, so not necessarily at an early age, just in general. Um, and once again, the risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis was higher in those that consumed a lot of meat and processed meat in particular. Um, there was another a recent cross-sectional study that um, associated beef intake specifically, so red meat, um, with an increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and then finally, the last paper is quite interesting. Um, this was a meta-analysis, so it's looking at lots of data. Um, and this described a, a dose response relationship. So this means that the more meat that you eat, the greater your risk of rheumatoid arthritis. So those that eat lower levels of meat have a, an increased risk to those that don't, but a lower risk to those that eat a lot of meat. Um, so that's quite interesting to see um, how the amount of meat in the diet can influence the risk of rheumatoid arthritis too. So once I had um, highlighted this association between meat consumption and rheumatoid arthritis, I then wanted to um, research a little bit further into how this um, association occurs. Um, and the, the, the cause of the association isn't actually clear yet, but there are many theories as to why um, an intake of meat-based products would uh, be linked with symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and it might not even be that one of these theories is correct and none of the others. It might be um, a, a complex um, interplay between all of them contributing to the development of the, the symptoms. Uh, so I'm just going to talk through the um, the various theories behind why this uh, this link might be there. Um, and also, once again, I've put the references at the bottom of the slides so that you can have a look at the papers yourselves. Um, so number one here on this slide, um, meat products uh, contain saturated fats that we know and many other inflammatory chemicals. So um, these chemicals may actually trigger our immune system to become activated. And in the case of autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, an incorrect activation of the immune system is what leads to symptoms such as joint inflammation. So this may, may be playing a role in how meat consumption can aggravate rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. Um, researchers have also described a link between um, the consumption of animal fats and changes to the actual structure of our bones and degradation of the cartilage surrounding the bones. 
And these effects are those are similar to those seen with osteoarthritis patients. So these are very specific changes for people with inflammatory arthritis symptoms. And consuming animal fats um, may also contribute to muscle wasting in rheumatoid arthritis po- patients. So um, degrading proteins within the body and stopping the body from making new proteins. Um, and this can contribute to muscle wastage. So the next very interesting paper that I found was um, this one highlighted at the top of the reference list. Um, and this paper was discussing the high collagen intake of meat and how potentially um, as we ingest more collagen, this could cause us to become sensitised to it um, and encourage our body to make antibodies against the collagen. Um, and obviously, if we're making antibodies to something that we're taking in regularly um, and we're activating our immune system, this can potentially be a trigger of autoimmune disease. Um, and then this was also very interesting, the, the number four on my list. Um, meat, as I said before, it's a very iron rich food and obviously iron is an important part of our diet. But what research has shown is that um, in, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, um, iron is actually known to deposit within the synovial membranes of the joints. Um, and this in itself can contribute to inflammatory tissue damage, um, inflammation and pain. So by eating an excess of iron, this could potentially exacerbate symptoms um, of rheumatoid arthritis. And then finally, um, consuming red meat also leads the body to produce a um, metabolite that increases inflammation within the body. So this is uh, this TMAO. Um, and this is produced um, during choline and carnitine metabolism. Um, and it has been linked in previous studies to inflammation of the heart and um, to development of cardiovascular disease. Um, The role of this metabolite in rheumatoid arthritis specifically hasn't been studied yet. Um, I couldn't find any information on TMAO and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, But what I did find was an interesting paper that linked levels um, of TMAO in the blood and disease activity in psoriatic arthritis. so obviously, with the two diseases being very similar um, in their symptoms, then this is a potential um, theory as to how meat can increase the risk of rheumatoid arthritis as well. So the the next thing that I looked into was um, something that I'm very passionate about myself, actually. I'm a um, I have a PhD in gastroenterology, so I'm very interested in how um, the bacteria that live within the gut can influence um, both a healthy and a diseased body. Um, so I looked into this um, with regards to eating meat products and how this alters the bacteria that are living in our gut. Um, and we know that what we eat can have a, a direct impact on the both the bacteria that are living in our gut and how they function. And this they then may cause inflammatory responses, uh, immune responses, and lead to the development of inflammatory diseases. And we know that changes in the bacteria within the gut has been ex- associated with lots of different autoimmune diseases, including type 1 diabetes, celiac disease, rheumatoid arthritis um, and multiple sclerosis. And when I was researching into this, one of the most interesting papers that I found was um, performed by a group of scientists at Harvard University 
and they um they showed that switching to an entirely animal based product very very quickly changed the the bacteria that were living in the gut um so when when changed to an animal based product the um bacteria that increased inflammation throughout the body actually seemed to flourish in this environment and some of the the anti-inflammatory bugs decreased and so obviously this is not what we want we want um a gut that is full of healthy anti-inflammatory bacteria and low in unhealthy pro-inflammatory bacteria and um, and interestingly, as well, um, throughout my research, I've found that rheumatoid arthritis patients um, have significant differences in the bacteria in their gut and in their um, mouth as well um, to the general population. So obviously, um, the bacteria that are residing in our bodies are very important um, for general health and they can indicate um disease and autoimmune disease so rheumatoid arthritis is a um condition that is associated with food sensitivities and there are many triggers that can um exacerbate rheumatoid arthritis symptoms and one of the the top triggers we know is red meat there's plenty of um evidence backed research which shows us that red meat exacerbated exacerbates rheumatoid arthritis symptoms and um, as well as symptoms of other autoimmune diseases um, in this slide i just wanted to highlight some of the other trigger foods that we know um, such as dairy nightshades which includes um, tomatoes potatoes peppers eggplants um, and these contain a chemical called solanine which can trigger both inflammation and pain in rheumatoid arthritis patients um, and then sugar refined sugars especially processed foods and um, alcohol and gluten and um, there's often a link between people with gluten sensitivities and rheumatoid arthritis and there's lots of scientific evidence to back up um, the role that each of these plays in rheumatoid arthritis um, that I couldn't list all of the references for these because there's there's many um but i have i've researched this in great detail over the past few weeks okay so on this next slide um i just made myself a little bit smaller um so you can see the table more clearly um and this is a table that's just looking more closely at some of the different dietary strategies um that you may have heard of there's lots of information about each of them on the internet um, just to clarify this AIP in the middle this stands for autoimmune protocol um, and then the final two rows at the end WFPB stands for whole food plant-based diet and then whole food plant-based uh, rheumatoid solutions program so many of you will be familiar with this from the rheumatoid solutions membership um, and then along the left hand column at the, the start, it's just um, lots of the different um, recommended health strategies. So the benefits of the different dietary plans that you can follow. Um, and then little ticks, just check in how each one fits in with these criteria. And then the final row at the bottom is given a, a total score out of 11. So 11 being maximum health benefits one being least health benefits um and obviously it goes from western diet at um in the first column which is giving us a health score of one and then all the way through to the rheumatoid solution program at the very end which is giving us a health score of 11 and actually matching all of these recommended health strategies on the left hand side and we've got carnivore diet straight in the middle of this table so it's given us a score of three which is still a very low score and um, it's not meeting many of these important checkpoints such as um, reducing oxidative stress in the body uh, optimizing the gut bacteria 
reducing permeability of the the gut lining um, and optimizing um, our cell membranes and obviously addressing food sensitivities and this is all things that the room food solutions program does address as we can see clearly from this table So for this last little section of the podcast, um, I wanted to discuss plant based diets and their effects on autoimmune disorders. So we've heard in the previous part of the podcast um, the detrimental effect that a carnivore diet can have on autoimmune diseases. But what about a plant based diet? What does the research say about these Um so once again, on, on the right hand side there, I've just listed some of the most important references that I found when researching this area. Um, so firstly, just uh, summarising a plant based diet and autoimmune disease. Uh, the reason that a plant based diet can be beneficial for people with autoimmune diseases is because it's very, very high in nutrients um, and antioxidants. Um, and these can help to reduce chronic inflammation throughout the body. Um, it's also low in, in some of the inflammatory triggers that are present. So the saturated fats present in the carnivore diet. Um, so one of the most interesting papers that I found when researching this area was um, a paper that was looking at a group of rheumatoid arthritis patients and they consumed a vegan diet for just one month. And in this one month period, um, the research has showed that the patients had a significant uh, changes in the bacteria that were living in their gut. Uh, so they had an increase in these anti-inflammatory bacteria and a decrease in the pro-inflammatory bacteria. And this actually translated to an improvement in disease activity for these patients. Um, and similarly, uh, there was another recent uh, randomised crossover trial, and this um, looked at another group of rheumatoid arthritis patients, and they consumed a low-fat vegan elimination diet, and they were shown um, to have an improvement in their joint pain um, whilst they were on this elimination diet. So these were both really interesting findings. Um, supporting the positive effects of a plant-based diet on rheumatoid arthritis patients. Um, so that's what I've listed in my, my list here. So a plant-based diet has been scientifically shown to reduce chronic systemic inflammation. It's been scientifically shown to optimise the bacteria in the gut um, and also to improve disease activity and pain levels in rheumatoid arthritis patients. There's also a growing body of evidence that shows a plant-based diet can help to heal a leaky gut. Um, so certain components in a plant-based diet, which includes fibre and short-chain fatty acids, are known to actually increase the integrity of the gut barrier and to heal these leaky areas. Um, these components of a plant-based diet, fibre, short-chain fatty acids, these are present in a whole food diet. Um, so where diet components are kept in their whole form, they're not refined and they're not processed. Um, and then finally, just um, an influence on overall health. Uh, so plant-based diets are very low in fat. This can help with weight loss, general health and well-being, which um, is often a goal for a lot of people with autoimmune diseases as they just work to improve their overall health and well-being. And then uh, finally, I just want to um, give you a few brief key takeaways. So um, I hope you've enjoyed listening to this podcast and I hope that you've learnt some new and exciting information from it. And this is just the key points that I'd like you to take away from from today. Um, so firstly, um, 
Symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, so joint pain, fatigue, stiffness, these can be eased by a diet that reduces inflammation in the body. But equally, they can be exacerbated by a diet that increases inflammation. So the information that we've presented here, the science is telling us that a, a carnivore diet, a diet high in animal based products, meats, this actually leads to an increase in inflammation in the body. Whereas a plant based diet, a whole foods diet um, can can decrease inflammation. Um, so a carnivore diet um, is an elimination diet and some people following these kind of diets can experience short term improvements in their symptoms. But this is a short term improvement and the, the risks associated with such a diet far outweigh any of the benefits. So we've discussed many of the risks of following these diets in this podcast um, and a diet that is high in saturated fats is bad for our general health anyway and um, not to mention all of the other the things that we've discussed here um and then finally that that key key takeaway point from this podcast um which i hope i've shown to you is that a meat-based diet exacerbates inflammation whereas a plant-based whole foods diet is scientifically shown to reduce inflammation and this can translate to um, improved disease activity, lower pain levels, less inflammation for rheumatoid arthritis patients. Um, and finally, as many of you will already know, um, a Rheumatoid Solutions membership can offer you access to dietary guidelines that can address all of the things that we've discussed in this podcast. So helping to improve a leaky gut, optimising the gut bacteria, healing the gut, reducing inflammation and improving symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory arthritis symptoms. Um, so if you're not already a member, uh, you can join up to Rheumatoid Solutions at www.rheumatoidsolutions.com um, I hope you've learned something from this uh, podcast and I've enjoyed talking to me today. I've enjoyed talking to you. Um, thank you very much and take care.